Hello everybody, welcome to Coding 101. My name is Skutla and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create a login or authentication app using React. Uh, this is going to be just the way to show you how uh, authentication is performed using SQLite, but of course there are other mechanisms that you can use to handle authentication like Firebase, Auth0 and many more out there. But today I'm going to be showing you how to do that. We're going to create a backend that is going to allow us to connect to our SQLite application or database rather, and we're going to be pulling uh, credentials from that database. So it's a very simple application, um, as you can already see, uh, as you can not already see because we haven't even started the application yet. But uh, please, before we get started, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Make sure that you drop your comment in the comment section. And most importantly, make sure that you like this video. So without wasting any much more of your time, let's get to our application. I've already npx this project and I've already created a React boilerplate application. In fact, I've scratched out most of the code in the boilerplate application and I have this dev class that you see here. And so we just have a hello world tag. That's what we have in a moment. So what we're going to do is that we're just going to create the login interface. And we're going to be using Ant Design to do this. If you're not familiar to Ant Design, Ant Design is a UI library that is very important when it comes to React application because it just helps you with the mini stuff so that you don't have to construct most of the things right from the beginning. You can just like um, get what somebody else has already created. Like for example, you can just like, it allows you to easily create or style buttons without uh, adding so much code to whatever you might be doing. So we're gonna be using Ant Design as our React UI library. As you can see over here, I am uh, going through some of the buttons that I can be using. Um, so it's very, very uh, an important application because it doesn't take a huge amount of code for you to insert a button like this. Look, this button has a hover effect. This button over here has a radius, a border radius. Not a, mon a, not a huge amount of code is uh, put into uh, actually getting these buttons from Ant Design. So that's why Ant Design is very useful. If you're not familiar with Ant Design, I would encourage you to go to ant.design and just check out this UI library. It's very important for you to do that. So we're going to use, to design our interface, we are definitely going to use Ant Design to do that. Um, in order for you to use Ant Design, you're going to have to just say, uh, go to your terminal and say npm install Ant D. It's as simple as that. Now, I had already installed it in my application, so I really don't need to do that. Let me just get rid of this tailwind config because I don't think I'm going to need any of that. By the way, if you hear people coughing in the background, just know that there's a lot of monkeypox going on around. <laughs> so you will just like excuse me a bit for that. So, uh, but just pay attention to how I'm going to be doing this project and you'll be okay. So uh, it's as simple as just going to your terminal and literally just saying npm install ant d in your terminal and you'll be able to install ant design. So for the purpose of speed and the fact that I just want to go through this project as fast as I can so that you can just like get the information and go try it out on your own, I am just going to get go straight to the point. So we're just going to come over here to components and I wonder if I should just create a folder and I'm going to call that folder login and then inside of that folder I'm going to have a file and I'm going to call it login.js. So this is where my, our user interface is going to be stored. I'm going to use, um, oh, I don't have that package. I mean, there's that package that just like puts React snippets and it doesn't seem to be working. It's ES7. This is a really good package that you should probably use as a developer <coughs> to like literally just um, acquire React snippets. So I'm just looking for it. You can see over there it's grayed out and that means there's probably something wrong with it. I'm just gonna uninstall it and then install it again. And I think it should be working properly. So this is just a, a package that allows us to put in some React snippets that we would have to otherwise type from the beginning and probably take much of our time. So that is okay. We go back to our login.js file and we just type rfc and you can see that there's the boiler code, if I could say that, for our application. It's as simple as that. So remember, we are simply just constructing a login form. So our login form is going to have um, a button that allows you to submit, of course, then it's going to have uh, two text uh, or input boxes or text boxes or however you call them. So the first uh, input box is going to be where you're going to be putting your username and the second one you're going to be putting the password in that text box. So we're going to have two text box and one button. And in order to do that, we're going to be using uh, Ant Design forms. Uh, Ant Design actually has a boilerplate 
uh, or a boiler code of this entire login um, uh, interface, uh, which makes it really easy for us because we, we can just simply go there, copy and paste that code. So yeah, let's just go to end design for a moment and look uh, for that login. You can just Google it up here and design login form. And, and I, I believe it should be this one at the top. I'm just going to wait for it to load. I'm going to pause this video. And once that page is done loading, we just simply, uh, first I think we're going to just like copy these things that are at the top, these importation statements at the very top. I'm going to just paste them in our application, get rid of the index.css file because we don't have that. And then we're going to go back to our code sandbox and we're just going to copy uh, this entire form like that. And then we're just going to put it inside of that. All right. And I think that's about it. And I think we're going to just create a, um, let's just make sure that this entire thing is indented properly. We don't want it to be uh, too much to the left side. Let's make sure it has proper indentation. Good thing this is not Python because Python would be screaming out of its lungs uh, about our indentation. But indentation is as easy as just using a beautify package um, if you want to do that. So we're just going to create a, an unfinished application. So unfinished is simply uh, when we just like done um, putting in the password and the username and we want to continue. So it's, it's more like our submit button. Let me just say that uh, the unfinished function is going to be triggered by our submit function. So we have the unfinished function. Let's just say values over here. And it's as good as that. We just come back to our app.js application, get rid of the hello world. Um, in fact, just get rid of the class name as well because I don't think we're going to need that. Get rid of the class name and we just put in our login. It should automatically import at the very top and we save this. Go back to our application and check if everything is according to plan. Let's refresh this because it doesn't seem like the changes that we've affected have actually taken uh, place. So we have a couple of errors in here that we have to resolve. So, oh, okay, no, I, I think I see what's going on. I think we have not installed our end design package. So I'm just going to go to my terminal. Okay, we go to our terminal and we just like pause it for a while, control C. And we just say NP, we just pull it up so that you can see. NPM install and D, just like that D. I'm going to pause this video and just allow it to install the package. All right, and then after it's done um, installing end design, we just simply run npm start and right after our application has started you could see exactly how our login page is going to look there's our te two text boxes and this is our login button and just a simple uh, a tag link uh, yeah nothing too difficult um, so um, we're going to go back to our code and what we're going to try to do is that we're going to try and center this application. We're going to make it a bit smaller and then try to center it. So in order to do that, we're going to go to log in. And what we're going to do is that we're going to declare everything inside as a flexbox. We're going to use flexbox, sorry, in order to do that. We are going to say style, um, display, it's going to be flex. Justify content, it's going to be center, and then align items, it's going to be center as well. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to create a div and we're going to put everything inside of a div. So we want our form to be inside of a div. So I'm just going to copy the entire form, exit out, and then put it in our div. And we want to control the width of the contents inside of the, the div with style, inline sliding. I'm going to say width, and we want to give it like about 400. And I think that's about it. And what I want to do is that I want to put a heading at the very top. And I want this heading to be strictly at the center. So that's why I'm going to put inline styling. And I'm just going to say text align. 
and then I'm going to say center. And then I'm going to say log in. Let him let it do. And let's go back to our code and see what has happened. You'll notice that this uh, our authentication, our UI has shrinked. And I believe that's about 400 pixels, if I'm not correct. And it's a little bit more to the center than it was before. Well, it wasn't, uh, it was more at the, at the center before, but I think you understand what I mean. Um, so I think that's good with UI. And I think after we're done with this, the only thing that's left to do is to complete this onFinish function. I'm going to tell you how we're going to do this onFinish function. We're going to be using SQLite as our database. But in order to access our database, we're not going to be accessing it directly. We're going to use a backend server. So we're going to create a backend server. All right, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create our backend inside of our client site. This is uh, usually not recommended. So what is recommended is just having a separate backend uh, application separate from the client side of your application. So we're going to do things a little bit differently um, here. And we're just going to create uh, our backend and we're just going to call it server. And inside of here, I'm just, this is going to be an npm package. So I think I'm going to need to open a terminal. In fact, let me just use the command line instead. I'm going to just say np cd to server. I was learning frame of motion, so this file was meant uh, for a frame. Of, so this file was uh, typically was meant for the uh, frame of motion crash course, but of course I ended up using it for this application that I'm creating for you guys. So sorry about that. So I'm going to just say npm init, and I'm going to say dash dash y to just say yes to everything. Oh sorry. npm npm init dash dash y. All right, now we have our npm package. And we're going to install a couple of things inside of our backend that we're going to be using, uh, inside of our server that we're going to be using for our application. The first thing that we're going to install is express npm install express. And then we're going to also install maybe course and sqlite 3. And I'm going to pass this application to allow it to install these files. All right, once it's done, uh, once it's done uh, installing all those packages, we're just going to go to our server and we're going to create a file that we're going to call index.js or maybe server.js. Pretty much the same thing. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to initialize our express package. I'm going to say express require. I'm going to say express. That's fine. And I'm going to say const app is equals to express. We're also going to use course and the course package. I'm just going to say course required. All right. Course. And then we're going to illustrate uh, or mention that our application is going to use the course library or the course principle. And what we want to do also is that we want to make sure that our application accepts. Um, JSON. So this is more like our body parser uh, element of our application. And we're just going to say take a, um, a JSON file with a limit or anything with a limit of 10 megabytes. All right. And we're also going to allow access control. Access control allow origin. I'm going to create a course and I'm just going to illustrate uh, how all of these um, these uh, statements that you see over there work together and why they are important. All right, and then finally at the very bottom, we're just going to say app.listen. I'm going to put our app at maybe 3001. That's fine. And I'm just going to say console.log to indicate that that server is running. I'm going to just say listening at port 3001. All right, that's cool. Uh, the only thing that's left for us to do is to create some routes uh, and really access our database. But before we uh, create our database, then we need to actually access our database. We need to actually create the database, sorry. In order to do that, remember our, our database is an SQLite database. So we need to create it in a particular way. Um, so in order to create an SQLite database, uh, first you need to, of course, install SQLite in your application. So just simply go to sqlite.org uh, forward slash download.html 
and just scroll down and you'll be able to see this portion over here that is called pre-compiled binaries for Windows and just install the one that is at the bottom, the bundle of command line tools for managing SQL uh, database file. So you're going to be downloading a zip file and put the contents of your zip file in your C drive. You're going to create a file called SQLite on your C drive and put those contents in that folder called SQLite as I've already done over here. This is my uh, C drive and I've created a folder called SQLite and I've put the contents of that SQLite, uh, which are these three executables over here. And I've put them in this folder and then we're done. And honestly, uh, from here, it's going to be easy for us because we're just going to be able to create a database. So what we're simply going to do is that we're going to command line our way to that SQLite folder. And we're just going to say SQLite 3, because that's the one that we're using. All right, cool. And then we're going to just say SQLite and we're going to, we're going to say dot open, sorry. And we're going to create our own database and we're going to call it credentials. All right, and just like that, we've managed to create our very own or our very own SQLite database. I'm just going to copy it and put it in our project. But before we do that, we're just going to have to create a table where we're going to store our credentials. And we're simply going to do is we're going to execute SQL statements in this command line as such. So we're going to say create table, call it credentials. And inside of this table, we're going to have a field called username. It's going to be a text to make sure that it's not now. And then we're going to have another folder, I mean another field, sorry. I'm going to call it password. I'm just going to say text and then not now. And we put our closing bracket. And just like that, our SQL has been executed. So we're just going to give it a try. We're just going to probably put like maybe some dummy data inside of that. Dummy data that we're probably going to use. So we're just going to use the insert statement. So like insert into Credentials, that's what I'm sort of to say. That's how SQL. Insert into credentials. And remember that our table has two fields, which is username and password. And I'm just going to say values and put our name over there. It's going to be coding. And our password is going to be coding101. Like that. So our username is coding, and then our password is coding101. So we execute this insert statement, put like, and then just like that, we've put some information into our database. We can make a select statement to ensure that the information is indeed inside of our table. So we select all from credentials. And there we go. So now all that's left to do is take this database and we're going to put it inside of our project. So it's actually credentials, it's supposed to be credentials, dot db. Okay, so that's okay, that's fine. For some reason we were supposed to say credentials dot db, but we did not do that, so I'm hoping it works. So we're just going to take this database that we have here, and we're going to put it inside of our folder. So I'll copy it in there. All right, it needs for us to go to our exact folder. So, so I'm going to put it in there. So that's fine. That's OK. Um, I hope it works because it seems like we did not save it the right way. So I'm just going to go back and fix this. Just give me a moment. The only thing that I need to do is just say credentials.db. I'm going to pause the video and fix that. Managed to create our credentials.db database. I'm going to take it and put it in our project. I wonder what would happen if we just come over here and just. Yes, look at that. Our db is looking good. And now we have to access the db. Uh, and in order to do that, we're going to use a package that we have not installed as yet, which is SQLite. But we're just going to. No, we have installed it, but we haven't imported it into our code. So we're just going to say require. SQLite 3, and we're going to say dot verbose. All right. And then now we're going to use, we're going to create our routes. So the first thing that we're going to do is create our post route. 
I'm going to call it validate password. So put a forward slash first, validate password. And I'm going to put in request and response functions in there. And inside of our post route, uh, we're going to attach our username and password to the body of the post uh, API. So we're going to have username. So that's the reason why we're destructing this. So we're going to say wrapped up body. So we're going to attach our username and password to the body of the API. So that's why we're doing it this way. Cool. So I think we might have forgotten one important thing to actually connect to the database, which I'm going to do at the very top. So I'm going to just say db of database is equals to new sqlite 3 dot database. And then I'm going to say, what's our database called? Oh, credentials, creden, credentials db. And I think that's it. So I'm just going to do some error handling. Class. If there's any errors, let us know. But if there's no error, just say that we've connected to the database successfully. All right. And inside of, we're going to go back to our post route. We're going to say db.all. Okay, so how we handle validation is this. If we're going to say, uh, for whatever information we get, we're going to check if we have the specific username that coincides with the password in our database. If we have that particular record in our database, then uh, our validation is correct or our validation is successful. If not, then our validation is unsuccessful. So I'm going to just say select all. So I'm going to just say find for me any record that has the following information. Find for me in the table that is called credentials, where the username is equal to username. And the password is equal to template controls password. All right. So you're gonna find me a record that has a certain username and a certain password. And if you find that record, this is what I want you to do. Just go back a bit. So I'm gonna, this is gonna give us a callback uh, function, of course. And it's either an error or it's gonna give us either an error or a few rows. And we're going to first start off with the error handling. I'm going to just say, if there's an error, just um, throw the error. Uh, but if there's a row, uh, just say validation is equals to true. So if the rows, of, if there's actually an existing record, then we know that the number of rows is more than zero. So what we're going to do is just we're going to say res response.send. I'm going to send this JSON object over here, validation is equals to true. Otherwise, it's else send validation is equals to false. As simple as that. And then I think our back end is complete. So now all that we need to do is to tie our front end with our back end. And we're going to use a package called Axios in order to perform that. But remember, we have to obviously install that package first. I wish I had remembered to install all these packages at the very beginning of our application, but it's fine. So we're going to stop our application and we're just going to install npm install axios. Like that. All right, um, and then after we've installed axios, for many of you who are not um, familiar with axios, but let's first run our project. For many of you who are not familiar with Axios, Axios is a browser and Node.js promise-based HTTP client, and it just makes it straightforward to send a synchronous HTTP request to REST APIs and command or conduct rather CRUD activities. So we're going to use it to just send a request to our backend server. So it's as simple as that. It's just an a, an application or an HTTP client, let me say, um, that we're just going to use to send HTTP request to our backend application. So speaking of backend application, I think it's about time that we run our backend application. So we're just gonna go to our command line. Yes, over here, and we're just gonna say node mon 
server.js. The reason why we're using nodemon, and the reason why we're using nodemon is because nodemon, every time you make a change, it reloads the server. So that's why it's a, it's a really great uh, package to use. Um, so, and then our server has started. So now we can begin sending requests to our server. In order to send requests, of course, we're going to use Axios. In order to use Axios, we have to import Axios at the very top. We're just going to say Axios from Axios. And we're going to use it in our unfinished function. Remember, our unfinished function just it's uh, more like our submit button and our submit button comes with values and the values of course are these text fields that you see over here the password and the username so we're just going to destruct the values so that we are just left with the we can call the username and password individually we're just going to say values and after this we're going to say axios post and we're going to make a post request we're going to say http this is our backend server, localhost uh, 3001. And remember, our post uh, route is validate password. So I'm just going to copy this. And I'm just going to put it in there, get rid of the second forward slash. And I'm going to have to give it uh, our body. Remember, it, it's a, a couple of information that has been passed, which is our body. So I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to say username password and just like that and we can then make our then then make our then statement and then take the response remember the response can either be valid is is a is this object that we created over here validation so this is our response over here so I'm gonna have to deal with that response accordingly so I'm just gonna Make some space over here in order to deal with that response. So I'm going to say if rest of data dot validation dot validation, and I'm going to say if validation is equal to true, essentially that's what I mean there. And I'm going to put up a dialog box that simply says your password is correct. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know for your service. I don't know why I'm <laughs> typing that. Bit. Yeah, or else if validation rest of data or if validation rather is false, then you just simply alert the user that your password is not correct. You didn't write correct properly. Your password is not correct. Please try again. And that's the end of our function. So just like that, um, it should be able to detect uh, whether our application is going to say everything is correct or everything is not correct. Our, our application is going to be able to say whether or not our credentials are correct or our credentials are not correct. Okay. Now remember, if we go back to where we created the database, the information that we actually have in there, these are the credentials that we have in there, coding and coding 101. So if we put in coding and coding 101 inside of those fields respectively, then we should get this positive response that our password is correct. And if we put anything else, then we're going to have to get this dialog box that says that our password is not correct. Please try again. So that is the that is how we're going to know that our application works correctly. So I'm just going to put something that is not correct. And I'm going to click log in. And you'll notice that we're not getting any response from that. So I'm just going to see what could be the problem. I think it's probably the path that we've put in here. Look at that. That's where the problem should be. Let's try it again. Refresh this. Get rid of this. Let's try it again. Put in some silly information. And then it says your password is not correct. Please try again. So let's try and put the correct thing and let's see if it will work. Fingers crossed. Coding 101. If I click login. Your password is correct. Thank you for your service. All right. So that is our authentication application, our login authentication application, uh, using SQLite and Node.js as our backend server. Um, so yeah, it's practically it. If you're still having some confusions, uh, please remember to uh, post whatever thing that's confusing you in the comment section. Um, so essentially, what we did 
we used and designed to construct the UI for our application. This was just a simple copy and paste. Just go to and design, copy this form over here. They've already done it for you. You don't have to do anything complicated, but if, if you choose to do so, then that will be at your own uh, accord or at your own peril. So, and then do this on finish function over here. And then I think the complicated aspect would be creating the SQLite database, but I will create a course on SQLite that's going to just show you how to create an SQLite database. But for the most part, I think you understand how to do it. All you need to do is just go to the, this website over here, sqlite.org uh, forward slash downloads, download the SQLite tools, and then use them like I've used them uh, in this video to create your own SQLite database and also try to put in some information in your SQLite database that you're going to query uh, using this route that you have over here. So that is it for today. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to leave a comment in the comment section if you've enjoyed this tutorial. And also make sure that you like this video. Other than that, I will see you next time on Coding 101.